Hey, welcome back, everyone. James Murphy here from M Coding, back again to tell you about another new feature in Python 3.9. Today, we're going to be talking about random.randbytes. So this is a little bit of an overlooked feature that was newly added in Python 3.9 that allows you to generate random bytes, as it sounds like. So how do we access it? Well, I've already imported the random library here, which is where this function lives. And let's just see what it looks like when we print out random dot rand bytes. And we just tell it how many bytes we want. And that's it. So this would be a pretty short video otherwise if I didn't do anything with it. Uh, so we will, we will get into a little bit of a fun uh, demonstration of what we can do with this. But first, I want to make a little disclaimer here random.randbytes and the random library in general is not used for cryptographic purposes. Anything that has to do with security or cryptography, uh, there's a whole different library in Python which is dedicated to doing random number generation in a secure way. So just so I have told you about it, that library is called secrets. And in the secrets library, in the secrets library, there is another function called token bytes, which does basically the exact same thing as what random.randbytes does, except that it does it in a secure way. So you might be asking yourself, okay, well, if the secrets library has a way of getting random bytes that's basically the same, then why even have it in the random library? Well, the answer is the one in the random library is much faster. The one in the secrets library, remember, it has to do things in a secure way. So it has to do it slowly. It uses things like system entropy, and it'll wait for the operating system to get enough randomness in it in order to securely generate random bytes. Whereas the random library, uh, it doesn't do any of that. It will never wait for the operating system to get entropy. Instead, it'll just start generating bytes uh, using the built-in random number generator in Python, which is uh, a kind of Mersenne twister. Uh, one other reason that you might use rand bytes from the random library instead of secrets is that everything in the random library is seedable. I can always say random.seed and then put in some seed value. And then if I run the program, I'll get some data, but if I run it again, I always get the same data here. Let me just run it over and over again, and you see that every time the top line is different, but sorry, the top line is the same, but the bottom line is different. So if you need your random data to be reproducible, then you would always prefer using the random uh, library over the secrets library. And of course, anything that you want to be reproducible, that can't possibly be secure if it's reproducible. So those two don't conflict. Anyway, uh, that's why you would use the random library over the secrets library. So now let's do something fun with it. Let me get rid of that secrets import. So this is a time-honored tradition of every uh, programming school that I've seen, or it's, a, it's an exercise that I think every programmer should go through, which is to print random garbage to your terminal. It's a lot of fun if you've never done, done it before. So let's just do it here now. We've already seen that we can print these bytes out, uh, but that's not quite the format that we want it in because as you can see, the, the bytes, it says B and then it looks like quotes and then all these backslashes everywhere. This is kind of a string representation of the bytes. It's not actually printing the bytes out. So the way that you get the actual bytes to be printed is to tell the thing to interpret the bytes as a string. And you do that uh, by using this decode that takes bytes and gives you a string back. But there's a slight problem. If I run it, you see the UTF-8 codec can't decode blah, 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 invalid continuation byte, or you might get a similar but different error. Basically, the, the random bytes don't make up a valid string. So what we're going to do is just tell it to ignore any errors. We do that like this. So now when we run it, we see we get some just garbage uh, printed out. And I want to print out more and more garbage, so I'm just going to do this in a loop. So I'll say while true. 
And then let's indent this line. And then I'll also go ahead and add this end equals empty string so that it's not adding new lines. It's only going to make a new line if it randomly generates a new line character or if it overflows, something like that. So let's watch it go. And there you have it. It's generating garbage to my terminal. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little exercise on generating random bytes and printing garbage to the terminal. I know I had a little bit of fun. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if you come up with any other interesting things to do with random bytes.